for organizing this this event. We're very happy to to be participating in such a multidisciplinary and multinational uh, event. I hope it will be there will be many more opportunities to to participate here with you. And this is a, a project in which which was devised by my colleague Esther Bautista. Um, and she looked for some collaborators. I am one of the collaborators. There is another collaborator who is not an author of this presentation, who is a biologist. His name is Luis Hernandez Sandoval. In the three of us, we have uh, some common interests. And um, we, Esther thought about using the expertise of each one of us to to work on on this on this project that um, as you can see it's going to be a multidisciplinary and uh, in methodology in in terms of its methodology is going to to adopt a several uh, point of view basically we, we want to identify from the eco criticism point of view um, issues related to um, biodiversity, water, land uh, in, in contemporary Mexican literature. Um, we want to bring these problems uh, to a wider uh, uh, audiences and um, uh, to, to contribute with um, a point of view um, which is critical with a situation like the one that we live globally and very particularly in locally here in Mexico, ecological problems are, are rife and um, uh, very serious. So let us see. Um, we know when we, when we work in the digital humanity, humanities, that we're not going to please um, audiences of specialized areas. Um, as, as I told you, I am, a, well, as, as uh, Esther Bautista, she, is a, um, she studies literature, she's a scholar in literature. I am a linguist and the other collaborator, he is a, a naturalist, a biologist. Um, um, only an audience like the, a, a, uh, digital human uh, humanities is going to is going to to be merciful with us because the other specialized areas they are they are not going to be happy with uh, approaches which are um, half uh, of what a specialized uh, scholar would 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 do, but still we we believe that the interdisciplinary approach, uh, qualitative and quantitative analysis, uh, and the different uh, perspectives, they can contribute to create new visions, new approaches, and new ways of dealing with all the topics. Um, and that might be very interesting. Criticism is... Um, a branch of literary theory or criticism, which uh, um, starts at the end of the 20th uh, century or in the last quarter of the 20th century, and it has gained uh, more and more uh, popularity among scholars. Uh, there are some studies about uh, Latin American uh, writers uh, from this approach. And well, here you have uh, some some references. The, the approach is very varied, and uh, here I have um, um, we have uh, written down some of the topics that this approach tries to look at: mineral resources, hydric resources, uh, plant and animal biodiversity, and then general issues like global warming or sustainability, where we find a mixture of political, social, and ecological problems. So this is what we are going to look for in a corpus of uh, novels. 
And this is the corpus. I have tried to, to put a color code so that afterwards you can, you can follow it. This is a sample. The, our project has just started. We have been working on it about um, maybe three months, something like that. So what, you're, what we're going to present here is a sample of um, our work, okay? Um, we're going to look for those um, ecological issues. Concretely, we're going to focus in water. We're going to focus in water in five uh, novels. Uh, they are very recent novels. They are written by by well-known authors in Mexico, contemporary authors, and you can see the, the dates from 1910, the oldest, to 1920, the most recent one. I'm going to explain you a little bit about each, each novel. The first one, the one uh, by Cristina Rivera Garza, self-biography of cotton, which is uh, coded in green with the word cotton. It is um, a biography of uh, the author's family in migrating in Mexico uh, in cotton fields in the north, um, um, looking for basically um, a way of life uh, at the uh, beginning of the 20th century. It is a mixture of novel and essay, historical essay. Um, and, and this is a, a characteristic of, of the five uh, pieces of fiction we're going to talk about here today. Valeria Luiselli is also a, a kind of essay, creative essay, uh, where the author reflects upon um some issues related to Mexico City and the rivers there, etc. As you know, or you you probably know, Mexico City was a, um, a huge lake with a few islands uh, before the uh, or at the arrival of the of the Spanish. It was a lake, and now it's a dried lake. And there are huge uh, ecological problems about uh, related to to water, because um, unlike Venice or Amsterdam, uh, a third world city like Mexico with twenty million inhabitants is 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 chaos. In blue. In light blue, we have Yuri Herrera, Incendio de la Mina, El Bordo. This is about a terrible accident that took place in a, in a mine and took the life of several dozen miners uh, due to um, the neglect of the owners of the, of the mine. Um, number four in yellow ditch is La Fosa del Agua. Um, um, one of the most difficult problems in contemporary Mexico is uh, violence, and concretely violence against women. Uh, La Fosa del Agua is a denunciation of the femicides, um, which are um, uh, um, a tragedy that uh, takes the lives, a tragedy, a, a crime, sorry, takes the lives of uh, several thousand uh, uh, women uh, every year. It, it is um, um, a critical uh, issue related to uh, general violence where the victims are, are, um, are women. La, La Fosa del Agua, uh, the, the water the grave could be translated, I don't know, or the water ditch, um, is because uh, many of the, the bodies are, are, are found in the canals of uh, Mexico, Mexico City, which are basically open um, sewage. Uh, the, the canals, they are not rivers, but they are basically open, open to it. And finally, there is a, a novel by Diego Rodriguez in pink, uh, which is about the 
drain. It's, it's the history of how that lake of Mexico City in the 16th century uh, became um, the megapolis of the beginning of the 20, 21st century uh, with uh, huge um, ecological and uh, um, water, water problems. So these are the, the, the color codes, basically, if you are not into Mexican literature, uh, it's very understandable. Okay, I'm going to go to the methodology now. So this is a corpus, those five novels. We are hoping to enlarge the corpus a lot. Okay, but this is a sample for the work that we have done. We're going to show you two approaches, two approaches which are typical of uh, corpus linguistics. As, as yesterday, uh, some of you were asking, where is your data? Well, our data are words. Our, uh, and, and, and those words are the information that we try to make sense of. Okay. So we're going to use two techniques. One is going to be measuring the frequency and the range of words. We're going to look for words related to water, and we're going to look for those words in each one of those five texts, and we're going to see how spread those uh, words are in these in these novels. That is that is the first technique. The other technique is going to be keywords that I, I will explain later. Okay. okay. So um, the first step is to transform the uh, corpus uh, and to lemmatize it. The pre-processing implies uh, a lemmatization. Lemmatization means to transform all the different forms of a word into a basically dictionary entry, dictionary entry. So all the tenses and all the uh, persons of uh, one verb is going to be transformed into the infinitive. Okay? This is a, a work which is done automatically, basically. There are several uh, lemmatizers. If you are interested, I can, I can explain something more about this process. The second step is to look for each one of the 70 odd words related to water to uh, look for them in each one of these uh, texts. So we did a search and we divided by word in each one of those texts. So we have the presence of these words in those five texts. This was done with a software called Langsbox by the University of Lancaster in the United Kingdom. This is a standard lexical processing software. Okay. Uh, um, once we obtained the examples where those words were selected, we manually um, visualize them. This is an example of the word drops. And if you look on the left of your screen in column A, there is a column which says validation, where we put an X to texts where uh, the drops, they are not related to water. So that afterwards, these uh, examples are ignored for our uh, statistical analysis. So uh, drops of sweat or um, in a chemical uh, mixture, they were ignored because they were not drops of rain or drops of water, um, etc. So this was a, a, a manual uh, um, classification of, of words, which is a, a bit time consuming, but it is necessary because, um, for instance, the word source could be a source of water, una fuente in Spanish, a fountain, but it could be related or it could not be related to, to water because of its metaphorical uh, value. So this was down uh, manually. And uh, the third, the fourth step was to count the valid examples of each word. So for instance, 
In this example that you have here, we have that in the novel about cotton in line two, algodon, cotton, there were 130 references to water. There were seven, three references to a stream, arroyo, uh, seven references to a bordo. Bordo is a small, a small lake, a small uh, dam, uh, a canal, um, etc. So, so we have each word and for each novel. And this is going to provide the material for a graph that I will be showing you in the next slide, where we have nodes, which are the novels, and we have other nodes connected with, with those novels through the edges, which are the frequency and the, um, the presence of the, of the world. We also carried out um, an, uh, a statistical analysis which grouped um, the words. So in this graph, what we can see here are drain, which is the large pink novel, cotton, which is the green novel, ditch, which is the one about the femicides, papers, which is the one which is an essay, and the one about the mine here. And um, the statistical analysis basically grouped, grouped um, some words according to the frequency in which they, they take place. Some are in the middle, uh, like this area. These are words which are common to most novel water, canal, to dredge, cloud, dry, fountain, etc. Okay. And then we have other words which are just common to one, to two, or to three novels. So basically, Gephi, which is the software word that we use for this, um, um, identifies the commonality of these words and allows us to visualize the relationships uh, of these words in a, in a way that um, a frequency count or a table is, cannot do. Um, and this is basically one of our uh, first graphs that allow us to explore uh, this. So basically here what we see is that the, 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 the novel about cotton uh, uh, and settlers um, uh, contains uh, words which are related to uh, the conduction of water. Um, whereas um, the one about drain is about the conduction of um, uh, dirty water, not water used for agriculture, but water to be drained or sewage that needs to be dealt with. There will, there are several uh, uh, metaphors um, which are relevant regarding the, the, the switch and the and, um, and the dirt which is involved in this kind of analysis, because it is an ecological uh, uh, pollution, but also it could be interpreted as a moral dirt. Uh, here is a Google view uh, image of um, the river, uh, or one of the rivers, uh, which is now an, an, an open sewage where um, unfortunately um, many bodies uh, appear because this is where criminals dispose the, the, the body of, of the victims, etc. I know it's not a very nice thing to, to, to be talking about, but um, uh, fortunately, let me give you a bit of humor. Um, uh, digital humanities uh, does not deal with smells so far. And um, believe me, this is a place that it is, ex the stench in this place is, is, is really awful. Okay, the second analysis, I'm, I'm, I'm about to finish. 
And the second analysis is a keyword analysis. A keyword for us in corpus linguistics is a te statistical technique. A keyword is not a, just a summary word that you put at the bottom of an abstract, like yesterday our colleague from the University of Malaya was telling us. A keyword for us um, is a word uh, which comes out of a comparison, a comparison between two corpora. So on the one hand, we have an experimental corpora, which is the one that I have already presented to you. And on the other hand, it, there is a reference corpus where language is supposed to be uh, sampled uh, in an abstract or normal way. Uh, this is very arguable, but this is a very standard technique. We compare a small experimental corpus with a very large a reference corpus. Here we have used the Corpus 21 by the Real Academia Española, which is a very large corpus of maybe uh, several hundred, maybe not several hundred million words. And we compare the frequencies of each word it, in our corpus to the reference corpus. Then we calculate through a um, um, log likelihood um, uh, statistical analysis, we compare the, the relative frequencies of, um, of the same word in both corpus, and we can establish a comparison that uh, um, signals which are the keywords. So, for instance, on the left hand side, we have the keywords, uh, a statistic. Uh, for, um, well, these are translations, obviously, for cottons. And, and these, war, um, these words, they um, uh, pinpoint, they signal the topic of, um, of the novel. So we got automatically, uh, these are words taken from the first 200 keywords of the statistical analysis, cotton, land, soil, because in Spanish it's it's the same word, tierra, watering, riego, strike, because the pest, the settlers uh, and the and the workers who pick cotton they go on a on a strike, the border because the novel is in the border with the United States, Rio Bravo. Uh, settlers, agriculture, and water. And this is basically a, a, a history of how water disappeared and the um, um, cotton fields in the north of the country died with um, a massive problem of uh, displacement of agriculture workers. This, this happened at the beginning of the... Of the um, um, 20th century. Um, so um, here in Mexico, we have a very long history of uh, displacements and migration, which are related to scarcity, in this case, a scarcity of water. On the right hand side, we have an example of the keywords related to the novel about uh, the um, fire that broke out in the mine and took the life of uh, several dozen miners. Uh, uh, these words, they were also um, extracted with the same statistical technique of log likelihood, comparing the relative frequencies of these words in the two corpora, the reference corpus and the experimental corpus. Uh, the mine, to break a fire, incendio or incendiarse, Miners, body, smoke, dead, fire. Uh, Howl, cage, the entrance, the entrance of the mine, etc. So these are two analyses, the same analysis, um, um, which is um, about two novels with a very different topic uh, that have some common points. Uh, and we hope that when we start enlarging uh, our sample of, um, 
of uh, novels, we will start watching uh, patterns that are now um, a bit more difficult to see. So at this stage, the graph is providing more information than the keywords. That's so far what we what we have. Uh, this is uh, my last uh, slide, uh, um, which is about the future directions. Uh, we, we have started working with a list of about 70 words related to water, but we, we are hoping to enlarge this uh, to um, plants. So far, we have gathered a, a list of about 1,000 plants, but uh, <laughs> the biodiversity in Mexico is absolutely extraordinary, and it, it's going to take a bit of time to collect uh, the thousands and thousands and thousands of names that uh, people use to identify uh, the different uh, uh, flora and uh, in, 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 in our country. Uh, um, fortunately, uh, biologists, they have been collecting all these names and uh, especially there is here the, the work of uh, Jerzy Zadowski, uh, and our colleague uh, Luis Hernandez also is, is very important uh, to, to, to gather these lists of vocabulary that afterwards we, we hope to, to identify in our, in our corpus. Secondly, we would like to identify more, more terms of conflict related to uh, ecological problems like floods, uh, wildfires, accidents, landslides, etc. And finally, we, we are hoping to enlarge our corpus of, of novels and to start the devising uh, workshops to raise awareness of uh, ecological problems in, in literature. Well, that's, that's it. And uh, thank you very much for your um, uh, attention. Thank you so much, uh, Ignacio and Esther, especially for the, in my case, for the presentation of the methodology. I think it was extremely helpful. And I would like to start the question and answer session with my own question. So it's about uh, the novels, about not the genre, about the top genre. I mean, uh, there is a difference between an autobiography and a detective novel, for example. Uh, uh, are you considering this difference when you analyze the novel? Maybe my first question would be, these five novels, they are the same genre? Is, they are all maybe detective novels, they are all uh, autobiographies, they are different? And if you expect in the future to identify uh, difference in the, in the data because the difference in that subgenre? Yeah, well, uh... So, so far, we are not taking a um, genre as a variable. So far, we have just started collecting things and, and see if the methodology is working. In, in the future, we want to take into account a genre as a variable and see in where and how those ecological problems are, are present. Uh, so far, uh, the, the point that is common to those five novels is that they have a very high, uh, it, they are all of them a mixture of um, uh, historic research, essay, personal essay, and some um, elements of uh, novelization. These, these are the common uh, elements. But um, we we haven't we haven't uh, so far uh, taken into account a genre as a as a variable. No, not yet. Yeah, the, uh, I I would like to add that that is going to be quite difficult because, uh, for example, Cristina Rivera Garza's write, writing is difficult to 
to classify. Classify. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. To classify because of her specific way of writing. So um, we we are we know that that is going to be difficult, but we are trying to work uh, in a different approach, no, or with a different approach. Yeah, yeah uh, and my question was also related to the possibility of identifying a uh, ecocritic genre, maybe. Maybe in the future you can build a corpus of ecocritic Mexican novel, and you can maybe identify of the characteristic of a new genre. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, this is a topic that because of the, the current crisis, that we live globally, it's becoming a, a huge topic in young writers. So, um, well, uh, we, we, we expect that one of the outcomes of the research would be to, to prepare some workshops for young people or reading clubs so that we can, we can contribute to, to raise awareness of, of these issues. Yes, we, we hope so. We, we have already collected a corpus of um, 20th century women writers in Mexico. We have several corpora. And uh, once we have our methodology polished, we expect to apply that to the different corpora that we have gathered for other, other research. And um, I think Holly, do you have a question? Please uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I found this very interesting. I, I this has been an introduction for me uh, to um, uh, eco criticism. I, as a medievalist, I mean, I recall my colonial, uh, you know, readings on Fernandez de Oviedo, and when he like misnamed the pineapple. Uh, you know, as like kind of an imposition. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I found that like maybe the beginnings <laughs> of the problem. I'm, I'm really fascinated with the idea of eco-criticism as like um, almost a gateway to activism. And I noticed that at the end of your presentation, you mentioned, um, you know, like that part of the, maybe the objective of this kind of research is to call attention to the issues at hand. And I also noticed that um, you included uh, women's, uh, the book on the La Fosa, which is, I guess, um, to do with the environment, but more to do with women and violence against women. And I imagine that violence against the environment is violence against women and violence against children also and their futures, which is why probably young people are more interested in these topics because it, it really is their reality. I wonder how you um, expect to promote, or I guess how you expect to engage um, young people or the attentions of, um, like how do you expect to translate this research into activism? Because uh, I think I would appreciate that and I'm sure a lot of younger people would as well. Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. It's very interesting. We we're not sure. That's the answer. We're not sure. How are we going to how are we going to deal with that? We're not sure. Uh, there is a need. Uh, schools, uh, in primary and secondary uh, education. They are they are asking uh, universities to send people for workshops. And um, uh, there is a strong, um, we call it here, extension of the university work uh, into social issues, uh, which is a very recent trend. And, and we hope to, to contribute uh, in some way. Um, we, we believe, we have already been discussing about these issues, I have, for questions of, of for um, uh, time reasons, concentrated in eco criticisms. But there is eco feminism too. There is a trend, and maybe Esther would like to um, talk more about this. Uh, these are not issues which are separated. Um, uh, uh, neoliberal capitalist society 
uh, deals with uh, women as objects and uh, nature as goods, which which is um, something that um, uh, these labels that are given uh, are are very relevant about uh, ethical issues regarding uh, treatment of of women and nature, which is very much very much the same as products. And uh, that, that is part of the, of the very large issue that we want to discuss with, with, with you and with anyone, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I, uh, thank you so much for your question, Holly. What it is really interesting. And uh, uh, we were talking with our um, a colleague, Luis Hernandez, uh, about this subject and how can we work together uh, in our different uh, spaces. For example, uh, we are going to have some students who are going to collaborate in this research. And also, uh, we hope that we can create some groups in our faculty and in the other faculty, natural science and, and literature and linguistics. So that is going to be the, the beginning, hopefully, of, of more groups that can work together talking about uh, those subjects that we are trying to find out with their research. So hopefully, hopefully, we, we don't know, we are, uh, at, the, at this moment, this is just the beginning and, and we have a lot of conversations and, and well, we will see. I have, I have a question uh, and comments, probably more and more comments. I mean, I have a student who did a dissertation on uh, Carmen Bojosa, and I think she, she has a, a, a number of works related to nature and, and you can include her book in your, in your, in your corpus. But uh, at first, I, I, I really appreciate what you have done. Uh, you know, I've seen some criticism works, but you know, uh, you are adding the digital humanity and data science element there, and that's really uh, commendable. And, and I you know, really want to learn more about uh, what your, your um, your projects and your uh, direction, future direction. And also, um, you know, I, when I um, took, you know, a while back as a Latin American course, courses, uh, my professor uh, Antonio Coronel Polar, he always said, you know, Latin America, uh, if you can talk about nature, there's, that's another kind of, um, another um, field you can even create because right from uh, colonial period that there are lots of colonial texts, not just uh, encyclopedic or just uh, information, but all, you know, spe especially, what is that, the famous uh, uh, La Grandeza Mexicana. <laughs> it, the book is uh, it's sort of like epic format, but it's all about the praise of uh, Mexican, Mexican nature and, and um, flowers and trees and, and, and and uh, agricultural products and so forth. So I think the, the genealogy, I would say, the legacy of uh, uh, echo literature is, 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 is long and um, extensive in, in Latin America. So uh, I am glad that you're doing it from the contemporary purpose so to attract more uh, interest from young, younger generation, and I think, uh, and then adding that uh, the data uh, analysis or uh, the digital humanity element, uh, I think you can uh, you can get more interest from the younger people. So thank thank you very much for your work, and and I like looking forward to uh, reading uh, your 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 article. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank thank you for for your encouragement, your tip about Carmen Boyosa and well your, your your interest yeah we, we have to measure uh, the scale of this work because we have not planned it to be a, a live project 
uh, we could we could do a diachronic uh, corpus in order to see how uh, um, issues related to uh, exploitation of resources uh, have been have been done um, historically. But so far, um, I, I, we believe that this is um, something that someone else will be doing in in the future. We 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 don't we don't foresee. Uh, to to deal with um, texts other than twenty uh, first century texts, contemporary texts, but definitely, as uh, Holly was saying earlier about Fernandez de Oviedo and um, other novelists from the nineteenth or twentieth century chronicles, I, I, I think the the potential for this is is. Uh, very very large. Uh, it 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 could be even uh, comparable to what um, Marxist studies or feminist studies have um, have um, contributed to literature criticism. Thank you very much for the encouragement. We have uh, more minutes for more comments or uh, questions. And I think Professor Motafari, do you have a question? Thank you, Sean, so much. Uh, it was interesting issue uh, you raised, and especially because it is the common problems almost everywhere. So <clears throat> thank you so much for involving yourself to help the <clears throat> nature and indirectly you have to, you are helping everything uh, because uh, environment is the source of everything, uh, source of life. And it is a fundamental rights in fact, because everything depends on environment. However, thank you so much the uh, your movement. And it, uh, since you are taken uh, this issue in your uh, uh, in your interest, so it is really admirable. Uh, and uh, your work also was very uh, interesting for me. Also, using Excel uh, to uh, come to some conclusion, but I hope that you develop more and uh, to make it um, uh, more. Uh, reasonable and to get more result from that, uh, uh, you know, keywords and all those things. Already it is one step forward. It was very interesting for me, in fact, in your methodology. Uh, other than that, uh, just I wanted to know, uh, uh, we, as we, we are, uh, we are generational of fast, fast food, fast, 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 everything. So uh, fast information, speed, and all these things. So with all these things, uh, the new generation, do they have time to read novels in uh, that region? Just this is my question. Whether they have time and whether they uh, invest time or they waste time <laughs> to read the novels. This is a, a very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Safari. Yeah, <laughs> it is a, um, um, a a question plenty with plenty of common sense. Uh, do they have time? Some they do. Some they do. Um, some some people, some young people, they are they are tired of fast. Uh, things and there is there is another thing which is that uh, technology and algorithms to identify patterns in language etc uh, they are used many times by the naughty people like the uh, typical example of Cambridge Analytica to manipulate in um, social networks we the humanities we want to use those resources and we want to use them for good things, not for bad things, not for manipulation, etc. And, and I think that your, your, your question is, or your comment is, is, is very interesting because basically you are, you're asking, well, 
do young people think this is going to be worth it? Are they interested in, in literature as a reflection uh, of contemporary world, etc.? Well, uh, we're not going to save the world, but we, we want to put uh, our, our contribution there. And um, what I see when in my courses, that's, uh, there, is, there is always um, a percentage of people who, who, are, who are happy to see these new things and who volunteer to work for free in projects like this, tagging texts, uh, verifying sentences which are related to what because they see the whole picture and and there is always in a group of let's say 50 people there is always five who are extremely interested and there are other 10 people who find it uh, interesting then there is a, a majority of people who really don't care and some people who find it boring <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to work with the 20, the 40% who, who find it interesting. I'm delighted and I am very fortunate to have met such people. So I have, uh, I have suggestion, in fact, uh, since uh, you, in fact, uh, all of you, you uh, your team, uh, investing your time and your energy and everything for this project, I think you have to also have a kind of uh, one line, two line productions for those people who wants everything uh, impact and, you know, 3D. Yes. Yeah, you, uh, you have to, I think you have to work. It will be maybe reproduction again from your work, but it will be, you know, the uh, normally the audience uh, will be more. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we hope that if, um, if people, they don't want to deal with uh, ecological issues in a novel, in a 200 page book, maybe they will find a manga or something like that, which uh, is interesting enough for them. We hope so. Anyhow, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation and for the questions and comments.